Hey, Jerry Corley here, a.k.a. The Joke Doctor, StandUpComedyClinic.com with another episode of Ask The Joke Doctor. In this episode, we're getting back to answering questions right from Twitter. This particular question comes from Jay Rudy. Now, Jay says, I have a question for you. I'd love your thoughts. Open mics are very, very difficult to gauge material when in a room full of comedians that just want to perform and leave. What's the best way to figure out what works? Well, I've got a couple of things for you, a couple of answers here. Some you might be looking for, some you might not be looking for. Now, my best advice in this sort of situation is is, is multi-pronged. As usual, there's lots of different solutions. There's never only one. Choose your best mics. Go to the mics that work. Go to the mics that are suitable. Go to the mics that were they're efficient with you getting up on the stage. Like some of these mics, you, it's a lottery, right? You put your name in a, in a fishbowl and you may or may not get up on that stage that night. ROI, return on investment. Think like a business person. If you're going to show up, spend a few hours down there, sp- use your gas money to get down there, invest that time. Your most valuable asset is time. You go down there and you don't even get up on stage. Well, that's a waste of your most valuable asset. So you really have to pick and choose which mics work for you. Once you go around, you find, you identify the mics that work for you, put them on your calendar and choose the nights you're going to go down there. What nights are they doing that mic? That, that's going to be a Monday. Maybe you can have two mics on a Monday, three mics on a Monday. When I was working in New York and I was fortunate enough to have an apartment right there in the village, right, right down the street from the comedy cellar, in that area, I was able to do sometimes up to five mics in a night. So I'd start like at 6 p.m., and I'd be home by two in the morning, and it would be like a lot of mics to be able to do in one single night. In other words, use the time you have wisely. Attend often. When you go to certain mics, they don't know you, right? Comedians don't know you yet. Comedians are very insecure. They're not going to give you laughs right away. You've got to earn their respect, right? Because com- comedians just sit there. They're very, you know, they're working on their material. They're very focused on only their material. They're also very interesting to watch comedians, especially new comedians, they're afraid to laugh at you. If they laugh at you, for some reason, they think in a subconscious way, it takes away from their ability to be funny. So you got to earn their respect. Lauren Michaels, the creator of Saturday Night Live, said, the first thing that audiences look for in comedians is confidence. Not only the comedian himself or herself has to have confidence, but the audience has to have confidence in you. One way to develop confidence or earn confidence right away from that audience is to have solid jokes. I find that one of the best jokes to do in an open mic situation is a reverse, a good solid reverse that has a crisp surprise. Those are some of the hardest jokes to write well. So if you can come in with a really good reverse, like for example, I was at the gym today. You ever have this happen to you? You know, so you, you get up off a machine and then somebody sits down right after you, ups that weight about 60 pounds and it knocks out 10 reps, no problem. That happened to me today. Normally that doesn't bother me, but that chick was pregnant. So that's a solid reverse, right? And that's going to, it's all, you know, it's self-deprecating. I lose. There's an expectation that it's a male. That's a solid, crisp joke that's going to get a laugh with very high odds from an audience. It's also one of those jokes that's, tough to write. Another good confidence building reverse is something like this. You know, did you know this? Did you know thousands of injuries happen every year as a result of sex? I just read this today. Thousands of injuries happen every year as a result of sex. And a full 60% of those injuries are a result of blunt force trauma to the man. What? Yeah, blunt force trauma to the man. It's usually happening during intercourse when she's on top and um, her... uh, Husband comes home. Some of those injuries can be fatal. Now, those those two solid reverses really set up an expectation and then shatter the expectation. Think Anthony Jeselnik. He uses a lot of these jokes, right? A lot of these types of reverses. If you just have two or three of those reverses in a five-minute open mic set, you're going to earn respect from that open mic crowd. You go up there that first round and you lay lay out a couple of good reverses, those guys are going to perk up, right? They're going to go, oh, wow, those are good jokes. Now you've earned some respect. Next time you come back, they're going to be listening more. Now, not all mics have comedians leaving. 
there's some mics here in LA, one at like flappers in the, in the, in the bar where comedians hang out. I've seen it go the entire open mic session and comedians just hang out. You have at least all you need are two or three people really listening to your jokes to gauge it. So that leads me to the, to the other thing, like attend often when you attend these mics, often the comedians get to know you. They're more willing to laugh. They're, they trust you more. They're more willing to give over their laughter to you. Calibrate your open mic laughs. What I mean is understand what an open mic laugh is. Ha is a good joke. Ha ha is a keeper. Ha ha is a keeper keeper. And so you know what I'm saying? These They have these gauges and it's like they're not going to give you the same laughs you're going to get in a big room. You just have to measure it. You don't need an open mic to test whether a joke is funny. You can test them in front of friends. You can test them in front of, of strangers. I know a guy who used to go around testing pitch lines for movies in front of people he didn't even know. He'd just say, hey, I got this thing uh, uh, for a movie. I wanna, I'm want to. i pitching tomorrow. I was wondering if you'd just listen to it and see what you think. He'd pitch it to a stranger and then he'd go, oh, wow, that sounds really cool. Or, eh. You know, so at least you get a gauge. And sometimes they lie to you in those in those stranger pitches. But it's still, you can always tell whether they're being authentic or not. Like you tell a stranger a joke, they'll go, meh, or they'll go, huh, or they'll go, ha, ha, or like, ha, ha, something like that. You know what I'm saying? So you got to gauge, create a calibration, your own little calibration for an open mic crowd that are a bunch of comedians. You can still get mic time up there and determine whether a joke works or doesn't work. But I get it. Comedians leave. You don't feel like you have an audience, but you still don't need a full audience to gauge whether a joke works. Start your own room. It's one of the best solutions. Right back in the day, I had three dudes that uh, me and two other dudes hung out together. And um, we had two other guys or three other guys make a total of six in a group. We'd go from mic to mic to mic to mic. And we had all these friends that would support one another, listen to the new jokes give a good gauge, give a laugh, also laugh really hard if a joke bombs. We really felt, so it was like this friendly sort of um, vibe no matter where we went with this group of, of micers that we used to hang, hang with. Plus we had three guys, me and two other dudes that would hang tight and we each started a room. So, and the reason why I suggest getting a partner or two partners is because when you have a partner, like if he has a room, the other guy has a room, another gal has a room, there's three of you got three different rooms. Those are three different rooms you can play during the week because you get each other's backs. Secondly, if there's a night that you can't do that, if you can't host your own room, you can, one of these guys can get your back and they know how to run the room. And you guys sort of have a, you create sort of a uniform way you run the situation. So you each have a style that sort of supports the open mic concept, efficient time running, um, efficient hosting. So it means the host gets up there, warms up the audience for five minutes, brings up uh, an act, gets up, brings up the next act, brings up the next act. Not none of these uh, these um, MCs that get up there, they do 10 minutes up at the front, then a comedian gets up, and then they do another 10 minutes in between comics. And it's like, this night could go forever. Are you kidding me? So in this sort of situation, you want somebody who can run an efficient mic. The efficient mic, the reputation gets around, more comics want to show, the more successful the mic is. Start or go to a fourth wall concept type show. There's this group out in LA. They started this thing called the fourth wall. The fourth wall, I think they're in Van Nuys, they're in Hollywood. And what they do is like you, they have different time segments, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock. And they have 10 comics that can sign up for slots. They register online. They sign up for a slot. They pay $5 for five minutes. Now each, they have 10 comics, so it goes 50, five, zero minutes is the show. The MC has to run a very tight up front and close, and all the comics stay in the room from beginning to end, so they're there to support one another till the end. They leave. Then another, the next hour, comedians come in who are already pre-signed up. There's no cumbersome registration process at the beginning. It's right there. We're in the room. Mike starts. We're done in, in 50 minutes or in an hour, you leave, next group comes in. So that the group that's there supports the comedians that are hitting the stage. Everybody's in the same boat. They understand how it's run, it's organized, and it's efficient. Some people don't like the $5 for five minutes business model because they think it like it's pay to play, man. But in this concept, for me, 
as a performer where my time is valuable, where I'm working a lot, it's to be able to get up there and know I'm getting up for five minutes. It's going to take me an hour and I'm on my way. That is a best investment of my time right there. The reason these shows have shown up is because when a venue is allowing you to, to do an open mic at their bar or in their space, the reason they're doing that is they think it's going to increase the revenue they're bringing in on that day. If comedians are coming in, getting water, and nobody's putting money into the till, guess what? There's no reason for that venue to hold an open mic. So that's why one of these reasons these concepts have started is because comedians are broke, and a lot of comedians can't pay that extra five bucks. But it's good to be able to support the venue that provides a space for comedians to work. Always remember that. This is show business. Business is in all caps. Right. This is like if, if the if the venue is not making money, there's no reason to put on this show. All right. So fourth wall concepts, really good, very efficient rooms. At first, I didn't really like the idea. Now I've fallen in love with the idea, considering how efficient they are. And if you don't have the money to do that fourth wall concept, get a part time job, earn some money so that you have that money to be able to invest in your own future, your own career and do it now, man, because the future waits for no one. This is the workaround to all of this stuff. Uh, one of uh, Several of my students are now doing this concept and they're doing really well with it. Build a following on social so that you are the show. Look, Bill Burr doesn't have to wait anywhere in any of these places to get on stage. Doesn't have to wait in line, doesn't have to sign up anywhere. He can just show up to the comedy store and they give him a spot. One of the reasons is he has a following. Same thing with anybody who has a following. If you can go to a venue and you prove to them that you can bring in 50 people, 100 people, guess what? You got a show and it's your own show because you're, you've got a following. Now, if you check, take a look at Charlie Barron's on YouTube, he's got a huge following. It's over a million now. He didn't, have a, he didn't start with over a million. The first time I noticed Charlie on YouTube, he had 77,000 sold out Flapper's main room four o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday with all really big fans of his from the YouTube, his YouTube channel. Go check it out. Start something on social, build a following. Guess what? You can now start to dictate where you play. So once again, it is show business. This, you can build pressure outside the system so the system comes to you. So that's a great solution. And I would recommend this to everybody because you know what? We have more power in this thing than Orson Welles had in his first film shoot. So you can build something using this tool get a fan base, get a following, and you can put on a show anywhere. So those are the best solutions I have for you with dealing with open mics. Remember, choose the best mics, choose the ones that work for you, make a calendar, attend often, build relationships, calibrate those open mic laughs. Not all of them are the same. Start your own room with some friends even. And so you have several rooms that you can attend. Uh, choose a fourth wall concept, $5 for five minutes. Go to those. Those are very efficient a good investment of your time and all and the final one build a following so that you are the show hope this helps you brings you value and i will talk to you guys again soon and if you want to really master your comedy writing game be sure you get breaking comedy's dna download it once get all the updates and be ahead of any of your competition for eternity link is in the description